All right. Good evening, folks. Hope everyone's doing well. Got to just make sure that the stream is live. Everything is uh, going. Looks like we're good on YouTube. And uh, let's see. How's Rumble looking? Rumble is muted. Viewers waiting. It takes a moment for Rumble to catch up. We've, uh, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. We don't have a lot of topics, but they're going to be a little bit longer topics because they're things that I find interesting. So um, we're going to start off with Yingling. I have since acquired beer since the last time I did a Friday night stream. So we've got that going for us. And uh, first up on the docket tonight, I think, is going to be the, uh, the fiery but mostly peaceful protest outside of the, uh, the New York courthouse. So um, for everybody who's watching, by the way, remember to click that like button. It always helps out the channel. And say hello in the chat. We will be talking with the chat. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into it a little bit. So, shall we uh, shall we get started with our first topic? How's that sound, everybody? Yeah, uh, fade this out a little bit, huh? And Scotty says, "Hey, well that didn't work. Let's just uh, let's just pause this. I'm not gonna have that on in the background while I'm actually uh, reading through the articles. First and foremost." I was not the first person to find this, but I found it pretty early. As soon as the dude was identified. Uh, this is the uh, Max. I forget his last name. Crosby is his middle name. If you watched my video, um, the, the 630 video tonight, the first one, um, I showed his LinkedIn. This is the, uh, the guy who, uh, well, he set himself on fire outside of the Trump trial. And uh, this is the title of his his manifesto for today. They, he actually has roughly 20 posts, all of which are archived. I have the links to all of them just in case Substack takes it down because, you know, we need to find this kind of thing. Uh, so he is he said, oh, his name is right there. Boy, I'm not paying attention, am I? Uh, so he says, I've set myself on fire outside the Trump trial. My name is Max Azarello, and I am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside of the Trump trial in Manhattan. He's a Florida man, and he posted on Instagram singing, uh, start a fucking revolution. He had previously posted on Reddit. Allegedly, it appears to be the same account. Um, some internet sleuths who are better at sleuthing than I am found his uh, his Reddit account. He was an anarcho-communist, so a leftist. Um, and uh, now he's he's trying to raise awareness of something. This is what happens when the mentally ill don't get the proper treatment. This extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery. We are victims of a totalitarian con, and our own government, along with many of their allies, is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist world coup. Citation needed. And believe me, he's going to claim he's making a lot of citations. He's going to make a lot of claims, all of which are without evidence so far. These claims sound like fantastical conspiracy theory, but they are not, and I will make these claims without proving them. They are proof of conspiracy. No, claims are not proof of conspiracy. Claims are potentially evidence, but they need more evidence to back them up. If you investigate this mountain of research, it's not a mountain by any stretch of the imagination, you will prove them too. If you learn a great deal about Ponzi schemes, you will discover that our life is a lie. Our whole life is a lie. Look, we all know that Social Security is definitely a Ponzi scheme. There are a lot of other Ponzi schemes that are run by the government and governments across the world. That being said, it doesn't mean your entire life is a lie. But of course, the man was an anarcho-communist, so... Can't expect him to be logical about pretty much anything. If you follow this story and the links below, you will discover the rotten truth of post-truth America. 
You will learn the scariest and stupidest story uh, in our in world history. And you will realize that we are all in a desperate state of emergency that requires your action. To my friends and family, witnesses of the or witnesses and first responders, I deeply apologize for inflicting this pain upon you. But I assure you, it is a drop in the bucket compared to what our government intends to inflict. This is probably the only correct thing he will ever say. Because these words are true, this is an act of revolution. Last March, a billionaire named Peter Thiel started a bank run on Silicon Valley Bank. Again, he claims without evidence. Uh, I knew enough about Thiel that I found this incredibly suspicious. My hunch was that this was intentional, though I couldn't fathom why. Did the Silicon Valley Bank um, collapse have anything to do with Peter Thiel? Or was that uh, just because it was a badly run bank that ended up collapsing? I began investigating online and quickly found cryptocurrencies fingerprints all over it. You can you you can you can cite some sources there. You can you you can show those fingerprints. You picture it didn't happen, bro. The bank run occurred just days after Silvergate Bank, which catered almost exclusively to crypto companies, collapsed. Yes, when one bank fails, oftentimes other banks that potentially share the same or similar financial burdens, um, especially if they're all over leveraged, tend to collapse together. Uh, we saw that in the big banking collapse that was a massive consolidation in 2008. Uh, let's see. W meanwhile, several crypto cheerleaders were all over financial media warning of a regional banking crisis, and nobody in media was addressing the clear crypto connections. What are the crypto connections? Is he going to make them? We'll find out. And I dug deep into the financials of Thiel's venture capital firm, Founders Fund, and eventually uncovered the following, all proven many times over. But are you going to cite some evidence? Cryptocurrency is our first planetary multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. It was expressly created for this purpose by a laundry list of rich and powerful people out of Stanford, Silicon Valley, and Harvard, Facebook. Again, citation needed. March 2023 bank failures were all intentional. That's also citation needed. The banks were used to move our stolen Ponzi money. This singles that they're no longer dumping cash in to keep the cryptocurrency Ponzi scheme afloat and that it will soon go insolvent, as all Ponzi's must. That's definitely a possibility, but that's because crypto is not any more real than fiat money. Uh, Tits and Ray Gun says, blaming crypto is like being caught with a fat girl. You're just embarrassing yourself. Yeah, probably. It's uh, like the, the pink bicycle. Fun to ride, but you don't want your friends seeing you do it. Shrapnel says, if you don't physically own products, uh, is sailing the seven seas justified? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I'm a copyright absolutist, so I might not be the person to ask. Let's see. Um, when the Ponzi scheme goes insolvent, it will take down half the stock market with it. The perpetrators used their major companies to pipe into the blockchain so they could funnel money out of the crypto exchanges. This includes Google, Tesla, Apple, PayPal, Facebook, Disney, Walmart, Target, InBev, Zoom, and countless others. It is a Ponzi scheme so large that it created global inflation. No, it was the Fed and other central banks printing money without end that caused global inflation. In fact, the uh, the value of cryptocurrency is one of the things that seems to be being used to hedge against inflation. Uh, which is why the price of Bitcoin has been a remarkable leading indicator for inflation rates. Has it though? Has it? Because it fluctuates more than inflation rates have done. Hello, Stella. Uh, let's see. Uh, victims who bought crypto don't realize their money has already been stolen, so the money gets double counted by the victims and the criminals who stole it. That that doesn't make any sense. This actually sounds like the unhinged um, ramblings of the CSRQ scammers, although I don't think this guy's a scammer because there is no actual profit in lighting yourself on fire. 
but I would not be surprised if the CSRQ scammers in their next Intel drop uh, mentioned this guy's stuff. Uh, as it turns out, our elites are awash in Ponzi schemes. Stanford's StartX.com investment fund and Jeffrey Epstein's program for evolutionary dynamics he ran at Harvard, Harvard are both fake science Ponzi factories that these schools have invested billions in. They are filled with fraudulent companies that use smoke and mirrors to promise miraculous new technology, but always collapse while the perpetrators only get richer. Is he, is he going to back those claims up, though, with any kind of evidence? So far, he hasn't. Tits and Ray Guns says, so crypto is now responsible for inflation. Uh, what's this author on? Communism. Um, no, I'm not joking. He's an anarcho-communist. Uh, let's see. Uh, funneling trillions of dollars in stolen cash through the stock market created the largest stock market anomaly in history. The shock or the stock chart signature of a Ponzi scheme is a massive increase while they stack up cash and then a massive fall as they funnel out the stolen cash. This chart, uh, this chart shape appeared in all the companies listed above in order to explain the massive anomaly. Our criminal governments unleashed COVID on the world and told us these were the stay at home stocks. No. 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 Did, did you know that every summer, ice cream sales and shark attacks increase at the same rate? Just putting that out there. Ponzi schemes are vicious beasts, and cryptocurrency is history's largest Ponzi by orders of magnitude. It could best be described as an economic doomsday device intentionally made to shatter the world economy. The U.S. government is fully involved in this totalitarian con. To illustrate its bipartisan support, I'll note that nearly every participa or participant in the Clinton Global Initiative has ties to uh, cryptocurrency, while two of the biggest tech VCs who participated are Trump associates Jerry or Josh Kushner and Anthony Scaramucci. I don't know who Josh Kushner is. Jared Kushner is his son-in-law. But you're not you're not proving that any of them have any involvement in crypto. To better understand our form of government, I will point you to one of the most astonishing pieces of standalone evidence I found. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton's 1988 DNC speech where he nominated Mike Dukakis for president against George H.W. Bush. The speech is a vile, mean-spirited roast of Dukakis that makes no sense whatsoever for Clinton to ruthlessly attack a member of his own party should have been political suicide. But he repeatedly mocks Dukakis' noble and earnest qualities. Uh, Dukakis was the only person in history who ran on raising taxes until Joe Biden, who was running on raising taxes. Notably, actor Rob Lowe, who was supporting Dukakis, was victim or was victim of a uh, teen sex blackmail operation. I wonder where this leads to, huh? Hmm. Hold up. That's the Washington Post mm, from 1989. That's interesting and entirely irrelevant. Okay. Uh, let's see. Since we know Clinton is a close associate with teen sex blackmail artist Jeffrey Epstein, we can suddenly make perfect sense of the nonsensical speech by applying this lens. Bill Clinton is a cocky mob boss who blackmailed Mike Dukakis because Dukakis thought his job was to help the public. He teases out the future uh, public revelation that Kitty Dukakis, or revelation that uh, Kitty Dukakis uh, drank rubbing alcohol and offers a strange anecdote about the crack epidemic that reveals he is an exceedingly proud drug runner. Mm, no. Mm, no. No. I mean, maybe, maybe it's true, but you're making a lot of conjecture. And you're you're not backing it up with any kind of evidence you're making a shitload of unhinged and irrelevant unrelated claims and claiming this proves your point what does this revelation tell us that our government is conning us completely well i suppose he's said two true things so far 
Bill Clinton was secretly on former CIA director George H.W. Bush's side and that the Democrat versus Republican division has been entirely manufactured ever since Clinton, uh, ever since. Clinton is with Bush. Gore is with Bush. Trump is with Hillary and so on. No, <laughs> definitely not. <clears throat> now, Clinton and Bush, like they were all the uniparty. Um, George H.W. Bush was the head of the CIA. He worked with Barack Obama's grandmother at the CIA. Did you know that? And on top of that, George H.W. Bush was the one who convinced the young Mr. and Mr. Obama to uh, get into politics. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Um, What's the end of the Democrat versus Republican division? Oh, we read that already. When they present themselves in public, they are acting as characters that are against one another, practicing kayfabe as wrestlers do. Yes, that is very much the uh, the mainstream um, behavior of the, the uniparty. And uh, Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, proved that today. Uh, as it turns out, we have a secret kleptocracy. Both parties are run by financial criminals whose only goal is to divide, deceive, and bleed us dry. Okay, he is saying a couple of true things, but he is making a bunch of, uh, he, he's making a thesis without providing any evidence to back it up. <clears throat> so he's drawing the wrong conclusions. Both parties are run by financial, uh, I read that one already. Uh, they divide us or they divide the public against itself and blame the other party while everything gets worse and more expensive and handful of people take all the money. Since it is fully parasitic, a secret kleptocracy is an incredibly unstable form of government. Left to its own devices, it can only lead to fascism or failed state. One of the key findings is, or one of the key findings of this research is that Harvard University is one of the largest organized crime fronts in history. Really? I mean, maybe. But again, you haven't actually given any proof yet. You're just making a shitload of claims and tying a bunch of potentially historical events together and saying that the claims you're making are what prove it and, um, and are the, the things that make the things true. It's a lot of inference and extrapolation and not in the right way. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, which is how they churn out billionaires. It's a major hub of this sprawling criminal network. As it turns out, dozens of the writers of The Simpsons went to Harvard. So, so I asked myself the question, if The Simpsons served the interests of, the, of organized crime, how would it do so? Well, it offers a dysfunctional family suffering from moral decay, a community incapable of solving its problems, a worker drone who slaves away for an evil billionaire, and cathartic laughs for our poor collect collective circumstances. These are some notable spe uh, specifics as it relates to this research, too. In Marge versus the Monorail, the townsfolk are too oafish and divided to invest in the town's needs fix Main Street and fall for the charms of a dazzling showman with a bogus monorail Ponzi scheme. When we know that the show is closely linked to an organization that invests billions of dollars in Ponzi factories, this becomes quite damning. Let's make a similar claim, shall we? Um, Dexter's Laboratory is about a boy genius who um, inadvertently puts the world in peril on a just about daily basis. If we understand that uh, the people who wrote the show uh, were also boy geniuses who were trying to summon extra dimensional entities, then it makes sense that they would make the show. It's 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 predictive programming, you guys. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Let's let's take a break from the chat. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, where do we go? where do we go? Where do we go? Okay, Stella said, "Crypto, by definition, cannot be minted without a mind algorithm." That's true. Uh, and uh, Tits says that as well. Oh, he, okay. Here we go. It's Trump's fault. Yeah, but it's also Biden's fault, and it's everybody's fault. There was a sign at the uh, the um burn pile that said um <clears throat> trump and biden are basically working together 
Uh, Stella says ice cream causes lactose intolerant shits in the ocean and sharks eat shit. I mean, that's no, uh, I remember the Dukakis in a tank ad. It was cringe says tits and ray guns. I was not old enough to remember that. So yeah, the first campaign I remember was, um, uh, Bush V Clinton. Uh, let's see. Shrapnel says, to be honest, I am less than a layman when it comes to crypto. Yeah. Crypto is probably a scam. Tit says, oh, wait, this is the new Human Torch Manifesto. Yes, yes, it is. Shrapnel says, also, Trump is not deep state. That's 100% true. Uh, the trial really heated up too soon. Oh, that was, I actually, um, that was the title of the video that I did at 6.30 today. Uh, the trial heats up. And the the text on the thumbnail was fiery, but mostly peaceful protest. Uh, let's see. Tit says, poor Arthur. Jacob says, what's up? Barely hearing about this manifesto. I guess someone uh, retarded, or I guess some retard tried to kill Trump. No, he, he did not try to kill Trump. He tried to kill himself. As far as I know, he did not succeed. Last I had heard, I, haven't, I was digging right before the show. Last I heard, he was in critical condition and intubated. He might actually end up um, recovering in the hospital and then going to prison. So there's that. Which would be hilarious. Uh, okay, where were we? Uh, in Lisa, the iconoclast, Lisa discovers that town founder Jebediah Springfield was a secret criminal con artist and that the townsfolk lives are a lie. Realizing this is an important discovery. She separately tries to get the townsfolk to listen to her, but they meet her with hostility, apathy, disbelief, and partisanship, and she fails to get through to them. Ultimately, she realizes the town is so far gone that perhaps it's better for them to be uh, lied to by con artists, and she keeps the secret to herself. I've not seen the episode, so I don't care. But is your life a lie? If, let's just say... Um, Let's say you had a family member who said that they were not a slave owner and then they became vice. Pre nope, that doesn't work. Um, what if um, what if you wanted to be a district attorney but hadn't passed the bar? And so you got out your neat. Nope, that doesn't work either. Mm, I guess he makes a good point. And so we realize the criminal truth of the Simpsons. Our elites are telling us. That our eroding collective circumstances are our own fault. Well, I mean, yes, because we're the ones who keep putting these elites in power. And we can't do anything about it while they steal the American dream from us. It is, for lack of a more elegant word, brainwashing. Dude doesn't have a brain to wash. Lastly, we string these major discoveries together. Cryptocurrency is an economic doomsday device. Our government is secretly, or is a secret kleptocracy. This is his last point. He has not laid out any evidence. This is a dude who sees ghosts and shadows everywhere he goes. The Simpsons exist to brainwash us. From there, the only research we need is critical thinking, which this dude clearly lacks, and we're able to piece together the true story of our circumstances. He's maybe, I wonder if he's schizophrenic, because this sounds like schizophrenia. I, uh, I saw a post on Twitter today that said... Um, these people used to shoot up schools, uh, the crazy people. I'm actually really glad that they're switching to lighting themselves on fire rather than murdering children. Uh, consider America since 1988. Institutions like healthcare and universities have become parasitic in their skyrocketing prices. No, no, it's not healthcare that is parasitic in its skyrocketing prices. It is insurance companies and governments. The governments are the reason the, the prices keep going up. Government regulation. They are not parasitic. This is an indicator because a lot of people are saying, oh, he wasn't left, he wasn't right, he was moderate. He blah, blah, blah. No, he's left-leaning. He guys, the guy is so fucking left-leaning. Listen to this. He's basically saying that charging money for healthcare um, is a bad thing. Uh, let's see. Um, Universities, yes. They, they've, yeah, universities are basically a scam at this point with, with their prices. But healthcare, no. 
News media tells us to be angry and tribalized. That's true. Daytime television warns us of moral dec decay. Local news tells us to fear our neighbors. Also true. The Simpsons tell us we're too oafish. Now, The Simpsons is a cartoon. If you read any more into it than that, you're a moron. And divided to save the American dream. Seinfeld tells us to celebrate the assholes and be irritated by all normal people around us. Reality TV tells us that real life is filled with hedonism and strife. You know, he's making some interesting, well, not here. This is bullshit. But he is making some interesting points here. I'll give him that. He must have been on his meds then. Social media owned by crypto criminals like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. I don't know how Zuckerberg feels about crypto. I know Musk is all about it. But I I don't know if, if Zuckerberg likes crypto because I think he likes the idea of a social credit score that can be controlled potentially by him. And you can't do that with crypto. Or can you? Uh, it's flooded with nonsense conspiracy theories. Mm. Mm. What is irony? Nonsense conspiracy theories. Dude. 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 Flooded with nonsense conspiracy theories and memes reminding us that we are hopeless, helpless, anxious, depressed, ironic. <laughs> ironic. You're depressed and ironic. Ironic isn't a state of being, but sure. Scared, uh, apathetic, escapist, lonely, misguided, and jaded, telling us we can't do anything but have a laugh at our circumstances. Sometimes having a laugh is the best way to change your circumstances. Liberals mock the hypocrisy of conservatives. Mo conservatives mock the hypocrisy of liberals. And our collective circumstances erode. No, no, they don't. I mean, sometimes, but not because of the mockery. The left shouts all cops are bastards, which, uh, which ensures that they'll be hated by the police and the public and flies in the face of leftist theory. Who? Based. Uh, the public's distrust of the government is at an all-time high, but so is the belief that we are helpless to do anything about it. And with all this, a sharp rise in apocalyptic messaging. Climate change will kill us all. COVID will kill us all. Vaccines will kill us all. AI will kill us all. Dear YouTube, because I know you like to censor and take everything out of context, I am quoting a lunatic. I am not saying that I agree with the lunatic. Hello, Mr. Scott. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> well, uh, We're going to finish this and then I'll catch up with the chats. Let's see. No matter the bubbles we ascribe to, we're we're bombarded with existential crises with no solutions. We've seen a surge in apocalyptic film, literature, and video games that tell us there is no way out of our poor circumstances but total societal breakdown. That's not, no, that's, no. Apocalyptic films still, they still end up with, uh, with an ending that is to hopefully encourage you to take hope that you can get out of it. Zombies tell us that the public is our enemy. If you go to your nearest convenience store, you can buy a can of water called Liquid Death. Yes, that's an ironic title for a very highly caffeinated uh, drink. Or is it highly alcoholic? I don't know. It's either one. This is our rotten farce. For our entire lives, we have been flooded with media designed to slowly steer us into a world where the American dream was dead, where the public was fully divided against itself, where everybody believed we were powerless to do anything about our worsening circumstances. It is all so they can organize an unprecedented apocalyptic rug pull on the entire populace as they pivot to fascism, which is perhaps best understood as kleptocracy at the barrel of a gun. Again, this sounds like the CSRQ bullshit, except that those guys are scammers, and I'm pretty sure this guy's just a lunatic. And I say pretty sure because that's how, what it appears like to me. I don't know for sure. I can't diagnose him. It's my opinion. When we piece it all together, we understand the truth. We are in a totalitarian doomsday cult. Why on earth would our elites do this? There are many reasons, but the simplest is because capitalism is unsustainable, and they know it. Hmm. Is that so? Because I dare you to show me one truly capitalistic society. There isn't one right now. We have crony capitalism, but not free market capitalism. And even crony capitalism 
is sustainable. Climate change and resource extraction would uh, catch up eventually, so they never intended to sustain it. They knew all along that they would gobble up all the wealth they could and then yank the rug out from under us so they could pivot to a hellish fascist dystopia. They escalated wildly in 1988 when former CIA Director George H.W. Bush got the White House, but his plan had been in action long prior. Why is Stanley Kubrick's comedy about mutually assured destruction called Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb? Because he was a cocky secret fascist who was getting us to stop worrying and love the bomb. Why did he make A Clockwork Orange? So we'd rejoice at ultra-violent uh, designed at ultra violence designed to desensitize us to the horrors of the world. Or he was an artist trying to uh, to make fun of things in the world and show what the world could be in a way that was bad to try and warn us about it. That's what science fiction is. The guy doesn't understand irony or humor because he's a leftist. Why were the Manson family murders crawling with cover-ups and intelligence agents? Because our uh, government wanted to make us fear for our lives and believe that hippies are deranged psychopaths. Says the man, the, the hippie, who lit himself on fire. Sane people don't do that. Why did Walt Disney produce a fraudulent documentary that told us lemmings follow each other off cliffs so we would believe it? No, they did it because it was interesting. Lemmings don't do shit unless they are stampeded by filmmakers. They wanted to make a story for people to watch and they did it in a horrifying way instead of doing something good. Not so that we would believe it. It's so that we would have something to watch so that they could make money. Why did the Beatles tell us to fear the tax man, to scoff a revolution, chase nonsense conspiracy theories, and that happiness is a, uh, is a warm gun so we would believe it? Everything's a conspiracy, you guys. Oh, but no, the internet is what's filled with unhinged conspiracy theories. Not me. No, I'm a sane person. Let me just douse myself in gasoline, motherfucker. Uh, why did uh, why did Easy Rider tell us that the hippie movement was dead so we would believe it? Because fucking is. Why did Chinatown end with defeatism, defeatism in the face of massive corruption so we would believe it? Sure, okay. Why did George Orwell tell us of a hellish future of totalitarian control that we are powerless to stop so we would believe it? No, so that we would try and stop it. So we would fear it and try and push back against it. It was a warning. Do you not understand the purpose of literature? I wonder how this guy would feel if he had not eaten breakfast this morning. Why did Wall Street tell us greed is good so we would believe it? That's not, it, no. Greed is good is a line from Atlas Shrugged. Why are you a stupid person? Why did the right thing tell us we're ra uh, racially tribalized? Maybe Wall Street did as well. Uh, so we would believe it. Well, no. No. The guy's trying to sound smart, but he probably doesn't understand per capita. Why did Simpsons creator Matt Groening make a comic strip called Life in Hell so we would believe it? And on and on and on. When it comes to any popular media, if you ask yourself the question, why would secret doomsday cult kleptocrats want the public to consume this? You will find your answers. Because they want to make money. Because they want to entertain things. Why is a guy on the internet reading my unhinged ramblings on the internet? Because I want to entertain people. So you will believe it. Jeez. Touchdown on paper unbreaded. This is obviously very bad news, but the biggest lie we've been told is that we are powerless. We've got uh, one way out of hell world, and that's for the public to realize that we've been conned completely so we can build a united movement that shatters every lie they've told us, mocks this rotten face as loudly as it deserves, and aims at nothing short of abolishing our criminal govern government so we can build one that serves the public. An anarcho-communist advocating for building a government. I wonder what kind of government he's going to advocate for. To understand this story, 
is to see right through the con, to become immune to the endless sea of criminal propaganda, and to feel the great joy and power that comes with freedom. If a small number of people quickly put on these truth-colored glasses, we are in for an unimaginably bright future. <laughs> Dude. Are you going to light the way to our bright future, my guy? If not, we get an apocalypse. Uh, build a man of fire. He'll be warm for a day. Set a man on fire. He'll be warm the rest of his life. <coughs> uh, let's see. Uh, for more information, I've put together this booklet, which links to one of his other posts, which we're definitely going to read. Not tonight. At another time. Uh, I put together this booklet that includes other major findings and a map to a sea of proof, along with all the other essays on this site. For the true history of America since the end of World War II, see here, and that's another thing that we will uh, uh, we will be reading at some point, see this uh, discovery unfold in real time, along with further explanations, hundreds of pieces of evidence not covered here, advice, inspiration, political theory, and the heart and soul of a man escaping history's largest doomsday cult by setting himself on fire and bringing about doomsday for himself. Uh, see my Instagram story highlights. That's not going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Instagram has removed his account. I apologize for leaving things so scattered, but this has been an exhausting affair. So long as you understand this true ideology, look, we don't know that it's true, but it's almost certainly not, uh, you will be able to learn the whole story. Here is a federal lawsuit I filed against dozens of perpetrators of the cryptocurrency Ponzi, not for litigation, but for or but just to preserve the information and attach my name to it. I was terrified and hadn't slept in days, and it shows. But it serves its purpose of keeping myself alive long enough to learn or to keep learning and telling the story. I no longer have my original research files from the crypto rabbit hole. If you want to see them, you'll have to get my laptop back from the government. Ask them how they got it. It's a very fun story. So, a man drives from Florida to New York to set himself on fire near Donald Trump and was known to the FBI. Imagine my shock. I hope you know how powerful you are. I wish you a hell of a lot more than luck. And there, there you have it. That is the manifesto that I forgot to put on screen because I'm a fucking retard. Sorry, boys. Let's catch up with the chat, shall we? Okay, we've got the howdies from Mr. Scott. Let's see, where were we? Where were we? Poor Arthur, barely hearing about the manifesto. Uh, okay, Shrapnel says, bro, watch the Fallout series. I might do that. I've been told that it's good, actually. Um, Shrapnel says, blue and on. Tits and Ray Gun says, uh, Florida man yells at clouds. I assume that's what that was meant to say. Um, Jacob says, to suit its needs. Stella says, pay cash for your medicine, cut the insurance and save money. Dude, I saw yesterday there was a cash plus, a guy who runs a cash plus um, pharmacy, which means he doesn't take insurance um, or cost plus. Sorry, he doesn't take insurance. He runs a pharmacy that he buys directly from the pharmaceutical companies and sells um, his cost plus ten dollars. And... Um, there was one that was a cancer medication that one prescription of it is so like a month supply or whatever um cost him seven dollars he charges cost plus 10 so it costs you 17 dollars for a month's supply or one script one script 17 dollars from his pharmacy if you were to go through medicaid twenty five hundred dollars for one script do you know why because all insurance companies use a middleman a pharmaceutical negotiator their job is to go to the pharmaceutical companies, go to the insurance companies, go to the pharmacies, and they determine what the cost is. Well, they are paid a percentage of the sale price. So they are incentivized to um, charge a shitload more money because one, two, five percent of $2,500 is a whole lot more than four dollars or seven dollars or whatever it was the dude said that the uh that med that specific medication medicaid the federal government spent 66 
million or sorry billion dollars um on that medication in 2023 if they had bought through his pharmacy that same supply it would have cost four billion dollars you're getting scammed for sure uh let's see tits and ray gun says life is like what you make it man uh, Stella says Zuckerberg is a deep state puppet, probably a figurehead given DARPA's project life log. Very probably. Let's see. Scotty or Mr. Scott says, um, anyone else thought Arthur was having an ep epileptic episode for a second? Hmm. I hope not. Let's see. I'm not sure what Tits and Ray Guns is saying to Mr. Scott there. Something about a Kotaku article. Stella says, hello, Shrapnel, Jacob, and Mr. Scott. Oh, thought. 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 At first, I thought, oh, you, maybe you thought that I found a Kotaku article? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, Jacob says, is this the guy who, got a, who, who lit himself on fire over the war in Israel? No, this is the guy who lit himself. That was a different dude. That was, uh, that was a, an airman. A U.S. airman. That was a couple of months ago. Now, this is the guy who did it today, uh, Jacob. Um, and that was uh, protesting over the fascist takeover from the government or some shit. Shrapnel says, wow, very misinformed as most commies are. Yep. Tits and Reagan says, no, this is the guy who set, him, set himself on fire outside the Trump trial. Uh, Shrapnel says, we are not powerless. Serge Lachance, welcome, Serge Lachance. I don't know if I've seen you here before. That you look familiar, but welcome to the chat either way. Says LOL, 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 or la 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 la. I don't know, but welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, Tits and Raygun says, "I'll bet he has a map complete with red twine." Very probably, yes. Jacob says, "Don't worry, Arthur. Uh, we're all retards," which I'll confess to being one. True, and yes, this is a Yingling Lager. This is the only beer I buy anymore. And a 12-pack has now gone up to $17. Fuck inflation. All right. So that is all of that. Let me, let me change tabs real quick. I found this one interesting. This is a complete change of pace, which is absolutely fine. Let's turn off the music, huh? Because I feel like that's distracting when I'm trying to actually like do something in the background. This is from Hollywood Reporter. This is 100% opinion-based, what they're saying. And I'm going to tell you why they're wrong. Based on facts. This might be the last article we go through tonight. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take us. Um I'm not going to go. Th so this is Hollywood reporters, critics picks for the best or the 50 best TV shows of the 21st century. So they say over the course of a few months, several zoom meetings, lots of emails and countless Excel spreadsheets, three T R a or T H R TV critics joined forces to hash out and rank what they considered the greatest shows since 2000 back in April, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It doesn't, nah. they said it's not, it was not fun. So let's, Let's do something that's not fun because reasons. Okay, grandma. Okay, let's see. So basically, these are what they say were the uh, the top 50 shows. Scripted shows, obviously. We're, uh, we're not going to go into their methodology. I don't care. Um, and I don't care about their, uh, their honor honorable mentions either. They say number 50 is Sex in the City. If it belongs on the list, it definitely belongs as the worst one on the list. I've not seen much of the show, but it's over the top. It's shitty, and it's created a lot of... the. Even the lady who created the show has said that she regrets... Let me... Did I put it up on screen? <sighs> My bad. The lady who created Sex in the City said that uh, um, she actually regrets, I want it this way, she regrets um, living her life as whatever this character was. I don't even remember. I don't, Jennifer Love Horseface. 
Sarah Jessica Horseface, whatever. Um, she regrets living that life, getting ran through, and now she's old, too old to have kids and is going to die alone, and she feels sad about that, um, like you do. This uh, the show, I would not be surprised if it was uh, like trying to emulate that show potentially ruined a lot of lives. And it's not me being like the super red pill dude or whatever. Like, like I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm happily married. Like you do you, but it was a vapid shallow show that was basically bullshit. So it definitely belongs at the bottom of any list and probably the bottom of a dumpster. Uh, 49 avatar, the last airbender. Um, it belongs on the list. I'll give you that. But at 49 near the bottom, fuck you. It is not the very best show ever made. But it is probably the very best kids show ever made. In my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't know why they chose this. I think they're just describing the show. It was a very good show. Very good story. Very engaging characters. Um, very well created. Very well rounded. Uh, very... Mm, balanced, very dynamic. It was, it was such good storytelling, good character building, good world building. It's probably one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, best kids show ever made, like I said. Um, and it is in my top five of all time favorite TV shows. Um, included in that top five. So, let's see, we've got White Collar, we've got Avatar, we've got um, uh, Deep Space Nine, and then uh, Burn Notice is definitely in the, in that top. I don't really, I don't know what the top five would be, but it is absolutely criminal that this is not in the top ten of this list. Just entirely criminal. And seeing this this far down is actually why... I wanted to uh, talk about this because it's bullshit. You know what? I'm going to put the music back on because it's nice and quiet and this isn't a serious topic. So we're going to have that on just playing in the background a little bit. Oh, all right. We'll do this one then. All right. Southside Comedy Central. I have no idea what this show is. They're probably wrong about it because it's on Comedy Central and it's bullshit. Vita, stars. I have no idea what this show is because it's probably bullshit. Basically, anything after, I don't know, well, anything after 2015, anything started after 2015 is probably a bullshit show. Reacher was a really good show until Alan Richson decided to run his damn mouth like a moron. Yes, this is whiskey in here. Yes, I find this hilarious. Vita. Never heard of it? I don't see. Typical Los Angeles set series spends most of its time in familiar upscale neighborhoods. Ah, show about rich people. Okay. Underground Railroad. I actually heard that that was a pretty decent not or pretty decent uh, story. I'll, I'll, I'll give him that. It's probably fair. The Crown. The Crown was a decent show in the beginning. I did not watch the entire series, though. I watched the first season and maybe the second season. Um, let's see... Hmm. They left someone out of there, I think. Nope, never mind. Crown was decent. Being at 45 out of top 50? Yeah, that's fair. That's a good one. The Leftovers, never heard of it. It's probably bullshit. Uh, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, was not as good as No Reservations. Um, so it probably belongs lower in the list. And also, I thought this was about scripted shows, not a reality show. Parts Unknown was not a scripted show. I mean, it was all reality show is scripted, but um, yeah, this doesn't even belong on the list. Station Eleven, never heard of it, probably bullshit. Uh, Beef, never heard of it, probably bullshit because it's on Netflix and everything on Netflix after 20, I'll give them 2018. Everything after 2018 on Netflix is soulless garbage that just goes out of its way to not offend anybody except Christians. And that's uh, that's really all that uh, that network is good for. Insecure. 
Never heard of it? Probably bullshit. The Deuce, probably a deuce. Band of Brothers uh, is actually a very good show and probably matches pretty well at 38. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, The CW. Uh, never heard of it? Probably bullshit because The CW is bullshit. The Shield, watched it. That is a dark show. That's such a dark fucking show. Holy shit, is that a dark show? That is that is probably the most fucked up show I've seen. Worse than Breaking Bad. I mean, like, darker than Breaking Bad. It was so insanely dark for all... I think it was six or seven seasons. It was, it was a long show. And, man, so fucked up. So fucked up. Probably deserves to be in the top 20. Uh, Chernobyl. I uh, never heard of it, but I heard... No, that's not true. I did hear of it, never watched it. It sounded pretty good. Probably in a good, in a good spot. Jane the Virgin. My wife liked that show. Um, I have seen a few episodes of it. Being at 34, yeah, it's probably about right. I've not watched the whole thing. Orange is the New Black. Weird and creepy. Uh, probably deserves to be closer to the 40 slot. Veep. Never watched it. Have heard of it. It's Julia Louis-Dreyfus, so it probably needs to be in the 50s, not the 30s. Fleabag. Definitely bullshit. Um, and yeah, Fleabag, Fleabag is, uh, doesn't even deserve to be on the list. Game of Thrones. Never seen it. Don't care. I'll take your word for it being a 30. Broad City. Never heard of it. Probably bullshit. How to with John Wilson. Huh. Sounds like a reality TV show. Doesn't belong on the list. Parks and Recreation. That's number five. That I forgot. That was that was my top favorite. Or that was my number one show. So not my number one. Uh Parks and Rec. Avatar the Last Airbender. Um Deep Space Nine, White Collar, Burn Notice. Those are my five favorite TV shows. Honorable mentions are Guilty Pleasures, which would be Big Bang Theory and How I Met Your Mother. Um, Battlestar Galactica was boring as fuck. Probably deserves to be somewhere in the 40s. Uh, review, never heard of it, probably bullshit. I May Destroy You, never heard of it, probably bullshit. Survivor, reality TV show, does not belong on this uh, on this list. Scotty asks, uh, Scrubs. Scrubs was a good show, but it's not in my top five. Um, Scrubs, um, I'd put Scrubs in the top ten for sure, but not in the top five. Better Things, never heard of it, probably bullshit. Deadwood, heard of it, want to see it, probably deserves to be and in a better position on this list. Probably deserves to be much higher up on this list. Peep Show. Mm, I've seen pieces of it. Seen pieces of it. I think 20 is probably about right. Uh, Rectify. Never heard of it. Probably bullshit. Friday Night Lights. Boring as fuck. Does not deserve to be on this list. Halt and Catch Fire. Never heard of it. Probably bullshit. Breaking Bad. 16 is... Mm, probably needs to be closer to 11 or 12. Atlanta, never heard of it, probably bullshit. Enlightened, never heard of it, probably bullshit. 30 for 30, never heard of it, probably bullshit. The Americans did not get a chance to watch it. Um, heard it's good, have to take their word for it. The Daily Show, definite bullshit, does not deserve to be on the list. Bojack Horseman, never seen it, seems annoying. Don't care about it. Probably probably shouldn't be on the list. Freaks and Geeks. This is not 21st century. Does not deserve to be on the list. Girls. HBO's Girls. Definitely bullshit. It's Lena Dunham. Does not deserve to be on the list. Better Call Saul. It was a decent show the first couple of seasons that, that I was able to see. Does it deserve to be better or higher up than Breaking Bad? Absolutely not. They never got to the fucking monkey. Reservation Dogs, never heard of it, probably bullshit. The Wire, never seen it, might be good, probably something to watch. 30 Rock, hated it, terrible show, hate being reminded, everything that Tina Fey has ever touched is trash. In fact, the last time SNL was funny was the episode before... Tina Fey took over the writer's room. 
Succession, never heard of it, probably bullshit. The Sopranos, I've heard is a very good show, have not had the chance to watch it, but I've heard that I should watch it. So I will probably do that. Uh, let's see. And the last one is Mad Men, which probably should be in the 30s. It is not the best show so far of the 21st century. It is boring as shit. I would rather watch the blowjob scene from uh, from uh, The Shield um, over and over and over again than watch another episode of Mad Men. It was an okay show, but ugh. Yeah, the blowjob scene and the face getting burned on the stove and the chopping of chopping off feet like i would rather watch those again um for the entire length of mad men than watch mad men again in which case i would just throw my tv away and never watch anything ever mad men was okay but it does not deserve to be the number one show of 2023 or of the of the sorry the 21st century Okay, let's see. Jacob says, I refuse to watch the absolute majority of main team, mainstream TV shows and films. You are correct. So much of our entertainment are damn outlets um, to uh, regurgitate, be vaguely nice, be meek, etc., etc. Uh, the original radio series, Gunsmoke, is better than the uh, majority of these, probably. Uh, Normie TV is extremely boring and extremely j gay. Yeah, yep, pretty much. Um... Scotty says, Mean Girls wasn't really trash, though. Mean Girls? Or do you just mean Girls? The HBO series with Lena Dunham. Mean Girls was a movie. I've not seen that. This was TV shows. Different thing. I'm a wee bit confused. Just a wee bit. Yeah. I actually went through that a lot faster than I expected to. Um, I thought there would have been more shows than I had seen. To be perfectly honest, I mean, Mad Men was an okay show, but Tina, F oh, Tina Fey wrote Mean Girls. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Probably because it was funny. And I'm not one of those people who thinks that women can't be funny. I'm one of those people who, uh, who thinks that Tina Fey can't be funny. Um, because I think Amy Poehler is hysterical in uh, Parks and Recreation. All right, let's pause the music. We'll move on to the next article, shall we? And I just need to pull the article back up on screen. I found this interesting. Um, I don't have a problem generally with CEOs being very well paid. But this headline kind of pisses me off. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO uh, David Zaslov gets huge pay raise following mass layoffs. So layoffs are different than just like massively firing people. Firing can be for cause. Layoffs are kind of like for cause, but it's a, a layoff is generally we can't afford to keep you on. If the CEO is getting a massive pay raise, you can afford to keep some people on. And it's terrible optics either way to take a pay raise when you're firing people or laying them off. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav just got a whole lot richer, receiving a nearly 27% pay raise last year while overseeing mass layoffs at the media conglomerate. For 2023, Zaslav's compensation totaled $49.7 million, up 26.5% from the previous year where or when he received $39.3 million. So that is um, $10.4 million. How many staff members? You could have kept on 100 staff members. If you average there, it could have been a whole lot more because I mean, a hundred staff members, that's assuming that every one of those staff members like go was making a hundred grand a year. Um, okay. No, what you're assuming is that those staff members cost the company a hundred grand a year between payroll, payroll taxes and benefits, um, which is probably reasonable in today's economy. Um, that means the staff member is probably taking, uh, or is probably getting a salary of 65 to 70,000 a year. So yeah, that's a hundred people that they could have 
probably afforded to keep on depending on which which pieces of uh, or members of the staff that they let go they could have probably kept a whole lot a uh, whole lot more on uh, let's see, according to the company's 2024 proxy statement that was filed Friday, among the media properties hit with headcount reductions under his leadership are CNN, which deserved to get let go because they're trash, uh, HBO, and Turner Classic Movies. How in the fuck do you need more than five people running Turner Classic Movies. It's a commercial free station. They only play classic movies that they already have licenses to. Okay, maybe 10 people. It just fucking prints money. How How is Turner Classic Movies not printing money? It wouldn't print a lot. But there is no reason for a channel like Turner Classic Movies to cost money. Zaslav took home a base salary of $3 million for 2023 with stock awards of $23.1 million and a whopping cash bonus of $22 million. His compensation also included $705,182 for personal security service, services because his staff that he laid off probably wants to murder him and $767 or $767,908 for his personal use of the company's private jet. Why does the company have a private jet? Why does a media company need a private jet? That does not make sense. Under his tenure, the company has carried out rounds of brutal layoffs stretching from late 2022 into 2024. Quartering has said the best advice he was given was cut once, cut deep. These people clearly don't know what they're doing if they're having to do those kinds of layoffs over and over and multiple rounds of layoffs. Companies often portion out layoffs over many months to avoid federal disclosure requirements, and because they're probably bad at running the companies. Many of the layoffs stem from the merger of AT&T's Warner Media with Discovery. CNN has seen layoffs in the hundreds, it should be the all of them, including the shuttering of the CNN Plus streaming service back in 2022. The Ratings Challenge Network has failed to increase its viewership as it doubles down on left-wing activism and anti-Trump grandstanding. Zaslav has become an unpopular figure among movie fans after he embarked on a ruthless round of cutting uh, of content culling on HBO Max and the company's other streaming services in a bid to save more money. So the company that is the home box office, in case you didn't know that that's what HBO stood for, is no longer having movies. Good job, dude. He has also shelved completed movies before their releases, including Batgirl and Coyote vs. Acme, presumably to use them as tax write-offs. His decision to lay off TCM staffers was also met with outrage from cinephiles. And there's really no reason to lay off TCM staffers because they shouldn't be costing any money. Like I said, it should be printing money, that network. That was a dumb decision by a dumb person who does not deserve to be paid that much money. Um, he was supposed to be because he was doing a really good job from what I heard at running the Discovery Networks. And then they they had him stay on as the the overall head from the uh, Warner, Brother, Warner Brothers Discovery merger. And he seems to be doing absolute bullshit. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stella says, whole aunt moron keck. I don't know what that is in reference to, but cool. Uh, Jacob says, I just finished watching the original first Dragon Ball TV series. Leagues better than what's on nowadays. Yeah, I, I have trouble watching, like engaging in anime anymore. Um, and maybe it's just because the way they do the stories are just not what I enjoy anymore. Although I do, there are a couple that I want to, to watch that I started watching on Cartoon Network but was never able to finish. But I don't know if that's the completionist in me or if it's because they were actually good stories. Because it's probably been 20 years 
since I saw most of those. So I just don't know. Uh, the last story I have for tonight is this one. And uh, I find it very odd that uh, the people are doing this. Um, I don't have a dog in this fight because I'm happily married, but I'm not going to, I don't know. I'm not going to tell my son to get an emotional attachment to a computer. I'm not going to be like, uh, go out and, uh, and find a woman who's going to divorce rape you and, and like do all those things. But if you can find the right woman and get married, good. Uh, let's see. Jacob says, uh, man, uh, the old anime, more specifically Dragon Ball, while it has some staple cliche gags, I personally can't place it with anime in general. Fair enough. So this is from the New York Post uh, from a few days ago. Tech exec predicts AI girlfriends will create $1 billion business comfort at the end of the day. I think, the, I think that he is wrong on this number. I think it will probably be a whole lot more than that. I saw one guy... Um, I forget what the name of his company is. Um, it just came across my Twitter feed two days ago, something like two days ago. Um, and uh, he has, well, Quartering actually talked about it. Um, I think it was the same day that I had that I had seen it. Um, he has an AI language model that takes voice, like has voice recognition. And speaks to you and responds and reacts to your movements in a um, desktop device, we'll say. So it's AI and reactive and... Um, and I think actually reacts to you. And uh, yeah, the, the dude is trying to create an AI girlfriend. Um, like to sell to the public. And if the thing is, digital feedback isn't enough. Like we need an actual connection. I have a lot of internet friends. But. I still like to be in the presence of people, like in the same room, being isolated, talking to people, even talking to people on the internet. It's not the same as being in person. It's not. And I think that what this is, is as hollow as seeing videos of the Grand Canyon versus actually being there. Unfortunately, it's going to take a generation or two of, uh, of living in that living in this world for people to figure that out if we can survive those generations uh it's only a matter of time before someone builds the next billion dollar dating app that will pay, pair real life users with artificial intelligence created girlfriends according to a tech executive greg eisenberg ceo of late checkout wrote a blog post on x uh, in which he shared that he met a man in Miami who admitted to me that he spends $10,000 a month on AI girlfriends. Plural. Plural. How are you not getting emotional satisfaction? If, if you're not getting emotional satisfaction out of one, you're not going to get it out of multiple. Plurals. I don't make ten thousand dollars a month i don't most people don't most people do not take home ten thousand dollars a month let's assume living in miami dude lives in miami so his cost of living best case scenario if he's single Best case scenario is what, two, three grand a month? And then he's paying $10,000 a month on AI girlfriends. So we'll say just for generosity's sake, assuming he's living a frugal, um, simple life, he's bringing home 
after taxes. $12,000 a month. $144,000 a year. And if he's single, that means he's in a really high tax bracket. So he's got a salary of 165, 170, maybe 180. Like, what are you doing, dude? I'm not saying that that you should be spending that on on real life women. But like, what are you doing? Why are why? You're clearly not satisfied with one AI girlfriend. Why do you need two? Because one isn't enough. Find something. Find a, con a human connection. It doesn't even have to be sexual. Find a connection with a human. I thought he was kidding, Eisenberg wrote, but he's a 24-year-old single guy who loves it, and it clearly makes the money that the, the weird Thadianas uh, want dudes to make and actually somehow believe every guy makes. When Eisenberg asked him that he uh, what he loved about it, the Miami man uh, is quoted as saying, some people play video games. I play with AI girlfriends. Okay, I get it, I guess. If you see it as a video game, sure. Uh, market cap for Match Group is $9 billion. Someone will build the AI version of Match Group and make $1 billion plus. I met some guy last week or last night in Miami who admitted to me that he spends $10,000 a month on AI girlfriends. He, uh, he wrote... Uh, Eisenberg said that he was told by the man, I love that I could use voice notes now with my AI girlfriend. Again, plural. I get to customize my AI girlfriend. The man told Eisenberg likes, dislikes, etc. It's comfort at the end of the day. Is it though? You have no physical connection with that person. You, you don't feel the presence of that person. It's text on a screen and an image. Um, the Miami man stated his preference for two websites, candy.ai and cupid.ai. You can see the architecture here is not quite right. I have learned that uh, there are some artifacts that are actually a lot easier to see if you know what you're looking for. Candy.ai bills itself as the ultimate AI girlfriend experience, which offers virtual companions for immersive and personalized chats. Text messages, guys text messages. It's not even a voice. Cupid AI says that it uses AI algorithms to generate virtual and fictional characters or companions with whom one can communicate through voice notes. It's kind of like dating apps. You're not on, on only one, uh, the Miami man said. Eisenberg said he was left speechless by the encounter and predicted that someone will build the AI version of Match Group and make a billion plus. Match Group is the parent company of dating apps such as Tinder, Match.com, Hinge, OkCupid, and Plenty of Fish. I did not know that they owned all of those. When I was single, Tinder and Hinge did not exist. Match.com was basically adult friend finder that was kind of free. OkCupid and Plenty of Fish, I did have profiles on. The um, My First Date story, which is early on in this channel, from early last year, um, I actually met that person on Plenty of Fish. Uh, let's see. Websites like romance.ai offer up virtual dating partners using technology that can mimic uh, real-life human interactions. Really? An app such as Romantic AI uh, helps you create the perfect girlfriend with whom you share interests and views. You can talk about everything, get support, and feel needed. Another app, Forever Companion, uh, offers users the opportunity to chat with bots based on popular social media influencers because that's because it's not creepy enough only talking with an AI. Now you have to uh, talk with someone that you're um, uh, having a weird parasocial relationship with. That sounds like a stalker and serial killer origin story. Replica, the AI chat box, so chatbot software, offers users the chance to create their own boyfriend or husband for just a few hundred dollars. Huh. Okay. Just a dude then, I guess. Um, let's see. Platforms such as Nomi.ai and Soulmate even encourage erotic roleplay. Users can personalize AI chatbots or can personalize AI chatbots avatar, 
and give it personality traits depending on whether they want a friend, mentor, or romantic partner. I do not want an AI mentor. Holy shit. So here's the thing. Let's say you have a web-connected AI. Um, and I learned this from Pirate Software. You have a web-connected AI. Let's assume that it is for writing code. Well, it's sourcing a lot of its knowledge from GitHub. GitHub may be broken. It may not. You don't know until you actually like check the code and test it and like actually and unless you actually know about it. But it's going to start feeding back to GitHub. So the AI code is going to feed to GitHub broken code. And then the next iteration is going to grab that broken code from GitHub. And then it's going to generate new code based on that broken code. And feed it back in so it's just a cycle of bullshit it's a cow eating its own shit and you're expected to eat the beef that comes from that cow that only eats its own shit it's a bullshit cycle i do not want a mentor based in that i don't want a bullshit cycle as mentorship An AI bot. Mentorship is to teach you something from your from life experience. An AI is not capable of having life experience. It's not going to know. It's not going to understand. Let's see. The nature of the messages could resemble sexting, so any erotic conversation would have to include explicit instructions on what the user would like to happen. Unlike Replica, which... <laughs> has filters to stop people from using overtly sexual language. Nomi.ai allows users to tailor the AI bot to their preferences by deciding which clothing the avatar wears and how open they are to sexual activity. Users also have the option of making their chatbots submissive or dominant. Uh, a group of Gen Z TikTok users reported they were falling for Dan, chat GPT's alter ego, with a flirty macho male voice that ha or that some have compared to Christian Grey from Fifty Shades of Grey. A recent survey from uh, InfoBip found that nearly 20% of Americans have flirted with chatbots. Nearly half of them, 47.2%, uh, did so out of curiosity, while 23.9% uh, said they were lonely and seeking interactions. If these things cost money, just, just don't, just don't, come on, just please don't, come, what, I discovered porn when I was 17, like, I knew it was there before, but the first time I actually, like, achieved, uh, it wasn't the first time I looked for it, but it was the first time I achieved looking at it, I was 17, um, and at that point, I promised myself that I would never pay for porn. Because at that point, yes, it was kind. It was available for free on like the sample sites and whatnot. Um, and I promised myself I would never pay for it because I knew of people at that time who were porn addicted and um, and were broke because of their porn addiction. I've never paid for porn. Why are you paying for not porn? Let me put it in another direction. Um, a strip club, I have been told, is the most expensive case of blue balls you will ever get. This is a digital strip club. And sure, you can bust and like have all that. But you're doing this to seek an emotional connection. You're not going to get that. You're going to feel empty when this is over. You're going to get emotional blue balls. Uh, nearly 17% said they were AI fished, meaning they did not realize they were talking to a chat bot liars 17% in the survey were liars or 
they were seeking someone and uh, they just didn't realize it with AI. Uh, the survey also found that 12.2% were seeking sexual chat within a private space. Just, I don't understand it. Like, why? Why are you doing it that way? If you're going to be a monk and you're not going, if you're going to go the MGTOW red pill uh, direction, I'm not going to judge you if that's the way you want to go because, you know, I don't care. Like, I don't. Why are you doing it in a way that costs you just as much money as getting divorced? Because Miami dude, Miami dude, he would probably lose half of his income in a divorce. But there's no chance that a 24-year-old living in Miami is making the $290,000 it would take for the $10,000 a month that he spends on those apps to be half of his income. Based on those numbers, the numbers in that New York New York Post article, the amount this dude spends on AI chatbots is more than he would spend on divorce and child support. It's weird. I'm not, I'm not trying to judge, but like do the math. Are you really that fulfilled from something like that? Are you fulfilled? Are you as fulfilled as you would be having an actual physical encounter with somebody? If the answer is yes, then sure, fair enough. I'm like, go ahead. Let's see. Stella says, comfort in VR and sausage pump. Mm, doubt it. Um, because the, I mean, the pumps that I have seen like the automated ones, like they weigh a freaking ton. Still says he's living his best e-life. Jacob says majority of anime, even back when Dragon Ball was airing, was and has been entertainment slop. I will die on that hill. Fair enough. Um, I think this is about all I have. Next Friday, hang on need to check my calendar because I know next Friday I am definitely not streaming. Yeah, okay, so the next two Fridays I'm not streaming. I will be around Monday on Locals. I will be around Wednesday on Locals. I will probably, or sorry, Monday on Locals. I will be around Wednesday on these channels. Um, Saturday, tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon on the Locals page, I will be doing a coffee roasting stream. So, I don't know what time it will be. I will make a notification at some point before that happens um, on the Gilded server and on Locals. So, it will be going out. Uh, that's really all the housekeeping I can think of. Let me find a channel to raid on Rumble real quick. Shall we? Let's see. What's something that's good that's live right now? Mm. Hmm. How about... Let's do Conspiracy Facts and Gaming. And hopefully I do this right. If I don't, then um, we're not going to raid on Rumble. That's how that works. Here. Oh, the live stream URL. Easy peasy. So, have a good weekend, everybody. Have a safe weekend. And hopefully... Um, we will have a uh, wonderful conversation again next week. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.